Good, Good afternoon. afternoon and welcome. We'll just begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you this afternoon thankful for all that you've done for us, thankful for life. We pray, Lord, that you will be with Brother Chris as he presents to us the word. We pray for the presence of the Holy Spirit to help us understand, to learn more, and that you'll give him your words to speak. Be with us all, keep us faithful. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Well, welcome everyone again. We're going to begin with a song called The Harvest. Tis day for night cometh when no man can work. Welcome everyone again to midday prayer on the prayer retreat. Now we're going to introduce our speaker. He's new to this platform, but we the, the, we we, are, we mostly see him behind bars. Yes, we yes. do a lot of prison ministry at Bedford Prison, and that's where we met Chris at Bedford Prison. We might have met him before, but that's where we know him from Bedford Prison, uh, doing prison ministries. So welcome, uh, Brother Chris. The time is yours. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, a very good afternoon to everybody. Um, I want to say a big thank you to Arlene and Linda. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, 
I know the devil is, I mean, was trying to do a lot of things. I nearly didn't make it today, but <laughs> by the grace of God, I'm here. So I give a big thank you to him. And I, I pray that the little presentation I'll be giving, uh, something will be picked from it to encourage yourselves with. Um, and my name is Chris Ametume. Uh, that's how you pronounce my surname, Ametume. Um, I live in Bedford, originally from Ghana. And uh, I've been doing prison ministries with Alan and Linda for some years back now. And uh, it's always been, it's always a, a pleasure to, to 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 work with them. Uh, I've entitled my sermon, uh, Hallelujah, Anyhow. It's a sermon I've written years back. And uh, when I have this opportunity, I was going through the sermons to see if I could choose something from the old ones or write something new. Then I came across this one. But going through it, this particular time becomes more relevant than when I was even writing it. So I, I believe you will uh, you will enjoy it. Um, I sent some link to my sisters uh, and uh, uh, when uh, when I'm ready, I will ask them to just share, just see if they can play the link for us to to see. Uh, let's go into the scripture. I'm using Psalm 23 today. Psalm 23 is a very known scripture, and a lot of people I've listened to people they've put it in different content from different perspectives and all that. Uh, maybe mine will be slightly different from uh, many others, um, but I want you to follow me to see what exactly or what exactly I'm trying to uh, say uh, with this scripture. Before, uh, bef no, let's go straight to the scripture. I don't know if somebody can read it for me. Is that okay? Can someone read yes. it for me? I want yes. us all to take part in Psalm, this. Psalm 23. Just get me. Okay. Yeah. And can you tell us the version you're reading from, please? Uh, King, King James. King James version. King James, okay. Yeah. Just getting it now. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Okay. Can we go to the video, please? Yeah, I'm just going to share.
A snake's eyes aren't very good, but they can detect movement. So if the hatchling keeps its nerve, it may just avoid detection. Miraculous escape. Okay. <laughs> that was very close. That was very close. Can we go to the pictures as well, please? Which one was it? The pictures, you know, the pictures I sent, two pictures. So I wanted to take a look at this very carefully. Can we go to the second picture, please? Okay, here's the second picture and I'm gonna move on. Um, Yeah, that's fine. So I'm one of those that believes in reality. When things are happening around us, as children of God, we need to look at them critically. And then we need to compare them with what the Bible says about these things. There's nothing you can do to embellish truth in reality. It will surely lead to falsehood because if there's, if, if there's a reality and you try to polish it, either negative or, or positive, and you're trying to polish it, there's nothing you can do about it. That is the reality. Uh, you have to be truthful right to the point so that what that reality is telling people, they can understand it clearly. But if you 
decorate it, paint it, or, or you've done something to it, then you're losing the true meaning of that reality. It becomes a deception to people. We had a look at uh, the scriptures, the, the video, the pictures. Now, going back to the pictures, the first picture is telling us, is, is showing two mountains. First of all, a valley cannot exist without hills or mountains. Is that, is that true? A valley cannot exist without a hill or mountains. That is where a valley comes from. Uh, the second picture again, telling us about, again, uh, depicting two mountains with some river running through in between. And the bottom there is what we refer to as valleys. And when we go to the scripture, it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Or the, the New Living Translation says, I shall not be in need. I shall not be in need. He let me rest in green pastures. The, the New King James or the King James Version says, he leads me in, in green pastures. Uh, the New Living Translation is saying, he let me rest in green pastures. Now, when I had a look at what exactly David is talking about, David always had enemies because of his, uh, his nature, because of things that he did. He always had enemies. When we read about the stories of David, even his own children, he became enemy to some of them. So when you look at the psalm critically, he must have been going through something and believes that God will deliver him from exactly what he was going through. What exactly is a valley? What exactly is a valley? A valley, figuratively, it denotes the perils of life from which God protects his children. Let me repeat that. Figuratively, a valley denotes or means the perils of life from which God protects his children. We all go through a lot of things in life. One of the main uh, works of Satan is to attack the children of God. There's a book called When Days Are Dark. It's a very tiny little book. I'm going to encourage that when uh, you have time, you can call conference to see if they still have that book, get a copy or get two and share with other people. It's, it's, it's an amazing book. It's an amazing book. It says, even though, even when, or even though I walk through the darkest valley, this is the New Living Translation now. It says, even when I walk through the darkest valley. In other words, when you're going through the most traumatic experience, the most distressing experience, the, the, the most uh, disturbing experience, he said, I will not fear evil or I will not be afraid for you are close bes uh, beside me. 
yes. your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. This is the New Living Translation. A lot of a lot of us uh, 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 know it by heart from King James or the the New King James Version, but I'm trying to use. I'm trying to use uh, the New Living Translation version to 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 see what they are saying or where which angle they are coming from. Uh, the New King James says, "Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your your staff they comfort me." Okay, so let me take you. Some of us are born in this country. We we uh, uh, the only forest we know is this little ones that we people go for a walk. They they walk through it. But when you go to the country where I come from, Ghana, when we're talking about forest, we're talking about a very thick forest where as children growing up, you dare not walk through there on your own. One, because of stories that we heard about the past, uh, we didn't know, uh, well, I don't know whether they are true or not. That alone put fear in you to go in that forest. Secondly, because of wild animals, you're scared to go in there because of snakes and other animals, you're scared to go in there on your own. So David is saying, yet do I walk through the, the valley of the shadow of death. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I like that, the darkest valley. In other words, when you are going through things that are so stressful. You are not afraid of what you are going through because as a child of God, you believe that the problem you have is nothing compared to the strength and the power of God. Your cancer is not bigger than the power of God. Your children disobey you. They are not bigger than the power of God. This is basically what David is trying to, to say. I'm trying to break it down so that we, we follow it critically. Again, I say valleys cannot exist without mountains or hills. The Christian walk is exactly like the video we saw earlier. One of my favorite videos, for that matter. So as you can see, the snakes, even though the, 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 the narrator was saying the snakes cannot see properly, but they can detect movement, that is exactly what he did. At a point, they all got entangled with a lizard. Miraculously, that lizard ran, managed to escape from them. The non-believer also goes through exactly that entanglement. So what is the difference between us and that non-believer? We have a hope. That hope is Christ Jesus. How do we hold on to it? How firm do we hold on to, on to, on to him? Determines the, the difference between us and the non-believer. How firm we hold on to Christ and how deep we believe in him determines the difference between us and the non-believer. How much do we know about him determines the difference 
How many times do we go to him? Or how close are we to him? The term is the difference between us and a non-believer. Benefits of the valley. So when you look at the mountain, the, the, the two sides of the mountain, even if it's just one mountain, you could tell from the bottom that it's greener than the top in most cases because the nutrient from the top, when it rains, it travels down to the bottom. As a result, a lot of animals go to the bottom for food. And then again, you get a drink or water in most of them. So again, they go there for drink. And whereas they are there, they're, 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 the, the dangerous ones looking for these other animals as food, and this is to hide somewhere and look to see which one they can actually attack us as food. So the benefit of the valley, it can be fruitful, nutritious, or productive. Uh, the land can be very fertile. But again, it's full of danger. That is what the valley is. It's full of danger because Every animal is going there, irrespective of their strength, what kind or what type they are, they go there for food. And that is where the problem starts. As children of God, we decided to run away from Satan. And from the day you run away from Satan, you become his enemy. He will be looking for you for food. He will be looking for you to devour you. The day you have made that choice to say, today I'm following Christ. Today I belong to God. Today I worship nothing but God alone. You become Satan's enemy. The book I just mentioned, When Days Are Dark, there's a story in there. Uh, two friends, very close friends, they usually go for duck hunting. And uh, one of them decided to become a Christian. And lo and behold, from the day he became a Christian, things just changed to the negative side. He started suffering, things happening. So many things happened to him. But his friend has been observing. Why is it that all of a sudden, this man is going through all this from the time he became a Christian? Anyway, they went for this duck hunting one day. And uh, the question was posed to the Christian, the newly Christian man. Why is it that from the time you gave your life to Christ, everything is just turned sour? The man paused, he couldn't answer. He couldn't find any answer to give to, to his friend. Suddenly they saw two ducks. They shot one dead, the other one they wounded. And uh, the wounded was, was flapping to, to run away from them. Then he clicked to the newly Christian. Say, yes, now I've got, a, I've got an answer to your question. And then his friend said, you've got an answer. He said, yes. He said, we just shot two ducks. One is dead. Can't run away. He cannot run away because he's dead. The other one was wounded flap him to run away. I'm like the wounded one. I'm trying to run away from, from Satan. And he's chasing me every day. See the way we run after the flapping one? The dead one, we left it because we know it cannot run away. That is how we Christians are like. 
When we try to run away from Satan, we are flapping away. We are flapping away. And he will chase us. He will do everything to chase you. He will do everything to antagonize you. He will do everything to confuse your life. He will put fear in you. He will put doubt in you. That is the job of Satan. So let's interpret that language of the lizard. If you notice the lizard went all the way up after he ran away, one particular snake still followed that lizard with a mouth wide open trying to catch the lizard. I'm sure if we, and then when the lizard got to the top, uh, there were other lizards there. So let's just speculate that they were saying, oh, you made it. Oh, you made it, bro. Well done, bro. We can interpret it in so many different ways. That lizard, by the grace of God, escaped death. Yet do I walk through the valleys of the shadows of death. I will fear no evil. When the snakes entangle around you, you fear no evil. If fear overwhelms you, you are defeated. Even though so many of them entangle around the, the, the lizard, his focus was to escape, which is exactly what, what he did. So we say, even though I walk through the valleys of snakes, even though they entangle around me, even though they chase and, 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 and try to, to, to eat up my, my flesh, I will sing hallelujah in the valley. So singing hallelujah in the valley is when you are going through so much in your life. And you're telling people, Hallelujah, anyhow. Oh, you've lost so much weight. Hallelujah, anyhow. Oh, what is the matter? You don't look happy these days. Hallelujah, anyhow. The phone rang is the doctor telling you, oh, your niece has just been to hospital. She's been diagnosed with this. She's been diagnosed with that. Hallelujah, anyhow. Because it's going to teach you to go on your knees. And then do what? And sing hallelujah anyhow. The valley of the shadow of death can mean so many things. It can mean the most severe and terrible affliction that one could go through or dark dispensation of, you name it. When you hear, oh, he lost his uh, brother uh, a month ago, and then suddenly, oh, his sister just passed. Suddenly his mom just passed. That is the darkest valley that person is traveling through. When things just following one after the other, when tragedy is following one after the other, one after the other, that is the shadows of the valley of death. So we can go to the list of things, endless. We can mention marriage, we can mention death, we can mention jobs, we can mention sickness, financial debris, we can mention them. We can mention the evil plots. The 
the hatreds are around you because people see you completely different from them. That alone can make them hate you. They, they, they realize that you have given your life to Christ. Things are happening, but you are just smiling every day. They will hate you. And what do you tell them? Hallelujah. Anyhow. In the valley of the shadow of death, when we go into that experience, when the snakes entangle around us, when Satan and his demonic angels plan wickedly against us, we sing a song, we say, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Bible says, in Psalm 27, it says, when the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Look at the snakes. They plan nothing but to attack that lizard. So this is lizard saying, even though you came against me to eat up my flesh, you fell. In Psalm 23, back to Psalm 23, it says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. How sweet. So when Satan and his angels are trying to attack you, but because you put your whole heart and trust in God, your faith in God, he say, no, 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 this one. You're not going to attack this one. This is my child you are not going to do anything to, to him. You can torment his flesh, just like he said, to, uh, he said to Job, but not his life. Therefore, he will prepare a table before you in the presence of Satan and his angels, in the presence of your neighbor who hates you, your church member who talks about you negatively all the time. He will prepare a table before them. And he will make your cup to run over. There are so many things that go wrong in our lives. When I first became a Christian, I thought, okay, this is it. I'm not going to get sick anymore. I'm not going to get angry anymore. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that because now I've given my life to Christ. Until the, the, the troubles start. Until I write that book, then I notice, oh, that is just the beginning of the journey. That is just the beginning of the journey. I've got a friend that is going through so much at the moment. I'm gonna name her Miss J. So I'm putting a prayer request that when you go on your knees to pray, pray for Miss J. I don't want to, to protect her. I don't want to mention her name. She's going through so much. And she's so fearful to go to the hospital because they may be thinking she's going mental. So now she's seeking counseling from Christian counselors. So I want you to remember her in your prayers. Last week I was telling the prisoners, Satan is real. You'll be surprised that even some Christians don't believe that Satan exists. You'll be surprised. First Peter 5, 8 says, 
Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy. For your what? Great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. You and I are not exempted, trust me. Satan will come through every corner to attack you. So we are not exempted at all. This is why this is the time we need to be praying without, without, without season. Without a stop at all. I see him more fearsome at the moment. You look around you, everything you hear is evil. Everything that is happening in the world today, evil, from children all the way to our leaders, evil. Whose work is that? That is the work of Satan. Psalm 29, another favorite psalm, and... Uh, a, a, a few verses here says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my word, refuge and my fortress. So when, again, David, this is David talking. When he's saying he's my refuge and my fortress, a place that he can run to and hide. If you run to God and hide there, can you go wrong? I don't think so. Uh, there's a song that I, I like so much. Under his wings, I am safely abiding. It goes on to say, my God in him, I will trust. Surely he shall what? Deliver you from the snares of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under what? His wings, hallelujah. You shall take a refuge. When you're hiding under the wings of God, can anything come to you? They may try touching you. They may try tormenting your flesh. They may try disturbing your, your, your mind. They may try to put sickness. They may try to, to, to disturb your job, your, your, your financial status. They may try. They will do everything. But under the wings of God, you are safely abided. Going back to reality in the bush, these animals, they lurk around. They hide in there, then they spot their prey and they walk slowly, crawl slowly, and then closer and closer, and then they attack. Bringing it to our lives, it's exactly the same thing. Satan is monitoring you, he's looking at you, he's, he's checking your movement, everything you do. Ah, this guy is being hedged by God, so he thinks that's it. Let me put this on him, let me put this on her, let me do this, let me do that, and then attack. Ephesians 6 is very funny how this is the scripture we shared in prison last week. Ephesians chapter 6, it says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. My fellow believers, the fight we are fighting, the, 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 the troubles we go through, we are not going through them by flesh and blood. 
They are not coming on us just anyhow. This is why the Bible asks us to be wise and vigilant. It goes on to say, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness. I'm stressing on the word darkness because that is exactly what we see today. A lot of the things we, we are happening, we, we have no idea about them. They're happening behind the scene. All we see is the results. They are planned by evil rulers. Valleys are part of life. Without valleys, I'm sure a lot of Christians will be so complacent, will be, it will be unbelievable. Without valleys, I'm sure some of us wouldn't even know how to say amen. I'm sure some of us wouldn't even know how to go on our knees. But when you walk into the valley of the shadow of death, because you need protection, you'll be running to your God. You'll be running to your savior to save you. Valleys are part of life. Irrespective of the nature of the valley experience you're going through, they are part of life. They are there to draw us closer to God. They are there to determine us knowing God even more than before. Satan is really determined to destroy, to cause so much chaos in the world. And that is exactly what he, he does. When you go to the book of Romans written by Paul, uh, one of my favorites from Romans chapter eight, and you read from verse 35, it says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulations or distress or persecution or famine or, or, or nakedness or perils or, or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in what? In all these things, we are more than conquerors through, uh, uh, through him who loved us. We are more than conquerors. Even when you're going through whatever you are going through, your song to be, I am more than conqueror through Christ or through him who loved me. It goes on to say, uh, for I am persuaded that neither, I love this, that neither death nor life nor angels no principalities that was mentioned in uh, Ephesians 6, no powers, again mentioned in Ephesians 6, no things present, no things to come, um, no height, no depth, no any other created thing shall be able to separate me or you from the, from the love of God which is found in Christ Jesus. This should be your, your song in the time of your troubles, in the time of your dark valleys, in the time of, of Satan chasing you and trying to torment or disturb or destroy your life completely. This is one of the songs you need to be singing. What is your valley like this afternoon? Are you so distressed because of what is happening in your family or because of what is happening in your neighborhood? Is it because your children 
are not what you expect them to be? Is it because around it is just full of sickness, people going through different kinds of sickness? Is it because of bereavement? A week ago, uh, a cousin of mine, very close cousin of mine was buried. Last week, Friday, I just got a phone call. Another close cousin's wife passed. That is a valley. That is a valley. I may be in England and they are in Ghana. It's a valley. But I say hallelujah anyhow, because I know these things are temporal. One day, if it is the will of God, we will meet again. How dark is your valley? Can you walk through it without fear? Can you sing hallelujah anyhow without, 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 without losing hope in your savior? What sort of fear has it created in you? Because the valleys will create fear and doubt in you. Have you got a date of experience that you question God about? I have so many. Even this week, I can't tell you how, how many questions I've asked God. I have so much. But I sing hallelujah anyhow. Before I finish, let me tell you something that happened to me. April, 11th, April, 2020. That was the, just the beginning of COVID. The beginning of COVID. So I had a, I've got some pins in my neck or plates, I call them, in my neck. And uh, every now and then they flare up. Uh, so this time I had a, a a little pain, and then all of a sudden it, it's getting severe and I was wondering, what's this? Then I was feeling some pain in my chest. I said, no, this is not normal. I called my GP and uh, I said to, to her, it was a lady GP. I said to her, look, this is what is happening. It started from a neck, da, da, da. And uh, now my chest, I'm not, I don't like what I'm feeling in my chest. Can you give me antibiotics? If you remember very well, those, those were the times that you cannot go to your GP. Everything was done uh, through telephone consultation. She said to me, no, 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 I'll, 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 I'll write some painkillers for you for someone to pick up. I'm not gonna, it's not, it's, it's, it's not uh, antibiotics. Uh, uh, illness, so I'll give you some painkillers. I'm not medical, I said, okay. So she wrote some painkillers and a cousin of mine went there and picked it up. My cousin came, he saw me, he said, no, no, no. I don't like the way you look at all. Do you want me to call an ambulance for you? Being a little bit stubborn, I said to him, no, I'll be fine. Just, you just, let me take the painkillers to see how it goes. That was a Friday. He went home, told the wife to, to, to prepare some food for me. The wife prepared the food. And I, that was the last food I ate on that Friday evening. Saturday, if you ask me what happened on Saturday, I don't know. Sunday, I don't know. Apparently people were trying to call me. They couldn't, no answer. The phone was ringing. No answer. Monday, a cousin of mine who was trying to get a hold of me and couldn't call my cousin here, I said to, to them, look, I, was, I, I spoke to him Saturday morning. He did not sound well at all. Can you check on him? Okay. They came, they called, no answer. They knock on the door, they praise the bell and everything, no answer. 
They pressed the neighbor's door, the neighbor opened the door, they came, bang on my door, no answer. They decided to call the police. The police came. They bang and bang and bang, no answer. The policeman went, one of the police officers went, uh, went downstairs to get their, their tool that they break door switch. And then the second police officer decided to bang again. And for some strange reason, I don't know how, I crawl on the floor and open the door. Apparently, it took me nearly five minutes to open the door. And when I eventually opened the door, they pushed me on the door because they, 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 they were so scared that anyhow the door closed again, I won't be able to open it. So they pushed me on the door, on the floor. I went on the floor. And then they carried me to the bed. I did... I, I did not know what happened. Few days later, I woke up in the hospital. I went into coma. According to my cousin, the doctor who came to examine me at home, I said to them, anyhow, they had left me for two, three more hours. That would have been it. That is a valley. That is a dark valley. Nobody wants to go through that. I went into coma for days. For days. What is your valley like? How deep is your valley? I woke up and I'm still singing hallelujah anyhow. Can you sing hallelujah anyhow? Can you tell your neighbor, hallelujah, anyhow, even though your neighbors know how much you're going through? Are you brave enough to tell your church members, hallelujah, anyhow? Can you still smile and praise God? Have you got a date to question God? Why have you allowed this to happen to me? I don't know how deep, how dark, how wide your valley is. But today I want to encourage you that whatever your valley, whatever shape, whatever form, whatever type is your valley, you can still sing hallelujah anyhow in the darkest part of your valley. It's my prayer that as you go home, you can share with people that you know, going through so much, and tell them to sing hallelujah anyhow. Amen. 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 We'd like to thank Brother Chris for that uh, message. Yes, I do. Hallelujah anyhow. You have to, when you go through trials and troubles, you've got to keep your eyes on God. Mm. Uh, we're going through it. We're, we're saying hallelujah anyhow at the mm -hmm. moment because for the last four months our washing machines are broken. We're waiting for parts. Whether um, we get them or not, we don't know. But we're having to wash by hand, and we're using now we're using Victorian tools like a posher and things mm -hmm. like that. You know, I mean, we, in winter we couldn't even t try it, could you? No. But at summer we're just uh, hoping we can get the parts. And then the dry yeah. machine's packed up. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you know, um, so it's nineteenth century house at the minute. But uh, we'd like to thank Chris for that message. Well, yes. We're getting some good exercise doing the washing by hand. <laughs> so we've got to praise God that we can do it. Yes. And uh, that, uh, that, that was interesting, that snake, um, the snake yeah. video. Yeah, you, you find that the, the Satan's the snake and, and he's trying to get you every corner. Yeah, and there were so many of them there, the demons. Yeah, you know, and uh, it, yeah, was... he's like, like gang warfare. Network, <laughs> network, and well, it's not marketing, it's network ro robbery. <laughs> it tries to rob you of your eternal life, you know. Yeah, it's true. Anybody got any thoughts or questions about the message? Anybody got a doubt valley they'd like to share where, they, where they've actually made a hallelujah, anyhow? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Declan Twins. 
My comment is, I just want to say to the man of God, Mr. Chris, who, who tell you my story, question mark. I didn't sleep today because of my valleys. So I think someone is telling you my story. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you for that comment. Any more comments? I remember there was a king years and years ago, I don't know how many centuries ago, and he used to have a, he, he used to have a, a, like a what? Well, like it was a bracelet. It was a ring. It was a ring, was it? And it got a, a flap on it and it had a lid on it. And, and when he got upset or anything, he'd going through valleys, he used to, he used to look at this ring and he used to say, this too shall pass. I don't know which king it was, but I can remember um, uh, hearing about that king. Hmm. Yeah. This too shall pass. This too yeah. shall pass. That's right. <laughs> uh, uh, this life is, um, you know, it's, it's uh, we just go through valleys and things like that, but we've got to keep our eyes on God. Jesus mm. went through the biggest valley for us. Mm. We never, you know, never asked to go through as much as he went through. No. Mm. Uh, the, last, the last three days of his life, you know, Calvary, uh, Gethsemane, um, that last week, it was, you know, it was big, big, biggest valley known in the history of the world, of the world, of the universe, I would think. Mm. And he went through it for us. Yes, I want to pray. Hey, I've got a request. I'm traveling uh, from Wakefield to Scotland, three hours, okay. going three hours, coming back. So mm. I'm going to pray and go on mute. Let's pray. Okay. Oh, 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 oh Father, who art in heaven. Jesus and the Holy Spirit. I <laughs> want to claim Matthew 18, 20. It says, where two or three are gathered in my name, I will be in their midst. Thank you for being in our midst. And you are God of time. Lord, I didn't sleep. I didn't sleep because of these enemies, O oh Lord. But you send your men servant to me and everyone who is here. We are going through so many problems. But, oh Lord, eight of us, I just want to invite you, Jesus Christ, is Michael, chief commander of army. May you come to our battle. Mm -hmm. Fight for us. We don't know how to defeat the devil. But you know, come and defeat the devil for us. Mm. Come into our battlegrounds, eight of us. Thank you, Lord. May you travel with me. I didn't want to go to this journey, but <laughs> as helpless as I am, I'm going there. May you bless me in Jesus' name. Bless your main servant. Enlarge his territory. He was thinking you don't have the word for today. But from today, tell him, Mr. Chris, the word is mine. You are mine. The people are mine. God mm. bless him and his family. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Yes, thank you for the prayer. Uh, we're just going to share the screen now for the section of prayers. Who'd like to pray for praise and thanks? Anyone like to pray for praise and thanks? Let us pray. Um, and uh, what we do, we, we, we um, do praise and confession of sin, um, Holy Spirit and prayer. So the praise and thanks, the text is um, Isaiah 25 verse 1, and then confession of sin, um, Brother Chris is praying for that one, okay. Um, confession of sin, we like to pray for confession of sin. I'll do that one then. 
the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Oh, pray. Holy Spirit. So the text will be Romans 5, verse 5. Get some, we read that one. And, um, okay. Um, did someone, I think there are two people who spoke to pray for the Holy Spirit. Oh, right. Uh, who was the other person? Did somebody say they are going to pray? Just confirm me. I thought it was them. How far have you got? Yes, there's, there's two more left. There's Holy Spirit. There's confession of sin. Yeah, I'm doing that one. You're doing that one. And then who who said for the Holy Spirit? Well, she said two people. Um, yeah, maybe I'm hearing things. Maybe there's no. No, way. it was it was me, Sister Dorothy. You can go ahead. I will pray for <laughs> prayer with it. All right. Okay. Thank you, so, Sister Sarah. Sister Thank Dorothy, you. Your text is. Uh, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, Romans. Um, no, where are we? Jude one verses twenty and twenty one. Thank you. Oh, one of your chores, yeah. And the last one is. Um, Prayer Retreat Ministries will be 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. You read the verse for me. Yeah, we'll do that. So, Chris, do you want... We, we, we'll, have, um, we'll have 30 seconds silent prayer that we write with God that our sins are forgiven. And then uh, Brother Chris will start with um, praise and thanks. Amen. Okay. Let us pray. Our loving Father, our faithful Father, our Abba Father, there's no one else we can pray to like you. What a feeling it is that we can come to you any time of the day, of the night, anywhere and call on to you and you will hear us. At this very juncture, we want to bring praises onto your holy name. We want to say thank you for today, for this afternoon, for this little section that we had and how you have been with us from the beginning till the end. But I, you know how I was feeling before I came on the platform. But you have led, you have guided, and you have spoken to your children. I say thank you. I say thank you that today we have roof over our heads. I say thank you. I say thank you that today we have some food that we're gonna eat. I say thank you. I say thank you that today at least we will have one person that we will talk to. There are millions stuck in a, uh, uh, in, in a room where they have nobody to talk to. Father, we say thank you to you for healing. We say thank you to you for your kindness, for your loving kindness, for forgiveness, Father God. We say thank you to you for our family members. We're singing praises in the middle of our troubles. We're singing hallelujah in the middle of our torments, of our disturbances, of our tribulations. Father, we say thank you. I just want to say thank you for everything you have been doing for us. Father, help us not to take you for granted, but that we will continue to magnify, to glorify, and to praise your name. In Jesus' name, amen. First John 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
Heavenly Father, we come to you this afternoon. We're all sinners and we need the grace, your grace to save us. We've all done wickedness. We, we are, um, sometimes we listen to Satan when we shouldn't do, when we sin. So we pray, Lord, that you'll, that you'll be with us, that you will uh, forgive us for all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, as the text says. Help us to, to um, bring yeah. everything to you that we're tempted with. Help us not to yield to temptation because we know that Satan is, he, he knows his end is near and he know, he's trying to go around killing and destroying. We know that he's done such wickedness and he's the wickedest one ever because he, he, he invented sin. So we pray, Lord, that you'll help us not to listen to him, that you will cleanse us from all unrighteousness and help us to be found worthy of eternal love when you come. This is my prayer in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 The prayer of the Holy Spirit and evangelism. Book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 5 says, For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Let us pray. Oh, dear Father in heaven, we thank you for the prayers that have gone up to you. And we thank you for answering us because before we call, you told us in your word that you will answer. Oh. And we have witness of your goodness. We thank you for the trials that we, uh, we face in this life. Thank you for the testimony of, of your, your child, uh, brother Chris, for encouraging us to, to say, um, to say hallelujah anyway regardless of what we go through father we thank you for the promise of the holy spirit you said you will baptize us with the power from on high that we may be powerful witnesses for you lord we want to be your witnesses everywhere we are in our big cities in our towns in our villages and in our neighborhood everywhere we are Help us to say, I will go. Help us to be led by your Holy Spirit. Help us to surrender all so that we may receive him. For he does not dwell in filthy houses. And we ask by your grace that you look down upon us. Show us where we are going wrong and give us the power to overcome. Help us so that we will not be weakened by the evil one because he throws everything he can find at us, diseases and, and discouragements of our, with our families, with our church members and all of that. All these things is because he wants to hinder the Holy Spirit from being poured out to us that we may expose him that he is a liar and the father of it. So, Father, we are asking for that power, we're asking you to give us the faith to believe or give our unbelief. For faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Yeah. You overcame the world. You told us that we shall have these trials and tribulations to be of good cheer for you overcame the world. So Father, we can only do this if we yield to the power of the Holy Spirit, the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Please, Lord, help us not to give up. Sometimes we feel like we want to give up because of the trials of the enemy. But of course, that is what you would want us to do, to turn our eyes away from Jesus. But Father, this, this afternoon, we pray that you touch each one of your child, that our faith may not faint, that we will look upon Jesus to strengthen us, to encourage us along the way. He has not left us alone. He's given us a comforter. May you help us to believe the message that you have given us to give to the world. May you help us to be powerful witnesses for you. Help us to have faith, because without faith, it is impossible to please God. But, oh, Lord, we are so weak. Help us to overcome and to be faithful. And to, and to go forward because we know that soon and very soon, once we finish the work that you've given us to do of warning the world and 
bringing Jesus Christ, the uplifted Savior, the one who is the only name given among men whereby we may be saved. We must be saved. You said in your word, your children have got these precious truths, but we are sitting on them. We are sleeping. Oh, Father, open our eyes that we may see the fields, that they are ripe. Help us to say, I will go. Without you, we cannot say utter, utter those words. We cannot even move our feet. We cannot even move our hands. So, Father, touch us so that the whole body may move to serve you. For we were raised to serve you. That we may endure all the trials. Give us that strength. Lord, we don't want to backslide. We do not want to give the enemy way to be a hindrance to us. You overcame him and you became victorious. You are the great victor. So Father, give us your grace to overcome and to go forward preaching the everlasting gospel to everyone we come in contact with. Give us that zeal and love for those who are perishing. Thank you, Father, for hearing and answering our prayers in Jesus' precious and holy name, we pray. Amen. 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 The text for prayer retreat ministries is Second uh, Timothy. Second Timothy 2 verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that rightly that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. And Amen. thank you for the reading of the word. Shall we continue in prayer? Kind and loving Father. God, we thank you for the privilege that you have given us that we can come to you and uh, tell all our worries, all our burdens, God, thank you that you don't you don't get tired with us, dear Lord, mm -hmm. and you give us this advantage that we can come and you cleanse us, dear Lord. You 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 ask us to come with all our burdens, Lord. You are a forgiving God. We thank you. We give you praise and we give you glory. Lord, at this time, I would like to pray for prayer retreat ministries and all the ministries uh, that are working for you this uh, around the world. Dear Lord, we know that this ministry, this prayer retreat platform was established by the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we can tell by the messages that we hear on this platform, the messages of encouragement, the messages that give us hope. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for today's message, dear Lord. Lord, help us to stand for the truth, to hold on to your promises and know that the God of the valley is the same God of the mountain and the God of the day you are the God of the night. So God, help us to hold on to your word, dear Lord. Help us to take you uh, at your word and to live for you. I would like to pray for the leadership of this platform, dear Lord. All the, uh, all the leaders, all, all, all the programs that are run on this platform, dear Lord, I commit them in your hands. Mm -hmm. May you bless them. May you be with each and every person. Give them the strength that they need. Help them, dear Lord. Bless them with their families as they are giving their time to organize all the meetings, dear Lord, every day. May you be with them. Lord, I would like to pray also for the prayer retreat um, camp meeting that is coming in December. May you be with each and every person who is willing to go. May you provide the finances. God, may you be with the speakers as well. 
help them, dear Lord, that they might make it uh, when time comes. And may you bless each and every person uh, to give the finances that are needed for the speakers to come to the, to the place, dear Lord. And we pray also, dear Lord, for each and every member that comes on this platform every day. May you be with them. May you be, may you be with the families represented. And may your Holy Spirit abide with us and help us to live for you. Not to be the hearers of word only, but to be the doers as well and make a difference in our, dif in our communities that we are living. May your name be glorified for yours is the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. 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 We'll stop the recording there. Now it's the private prayer section, so I'm just going to stop the recording.